In terms of standard deviation, the key thing here is I expect you to use your calculator, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but I'm not expecting you to use the formulas below, but I do want to discuss them. There's, there's a couple key pieces of information I want to be sure that you're aware of. Now, when it came to mean, we talked about using a sample versus a population mattered, but then when the formulas were actually looked at, they were the exact same process. Here you are going to notice a difference that over here for the sample, we divide by n minus 1, but down below for a population, we only divide by n. What ends up happening is that if you took a population and figured out its sample, its standard deviation, sorry, and then you took a bunch of samples, those samples are always under what they should be. We know there's sample error, but we want to get as close as possible. So it turns out if you divide by a smaller number, if you subtract just one, your sample standard deviation becomes so much closer to the population standard deviation that it's worth making that adjustment. You don't need to worry about it because it's going to happen automatically for you guys. But I do want to talk about the symbols. The two symbols you're going to see the most are for a sample standard deviation. I mean, it's exactly what it looks like. It's the letter S, and that's what we call it, is an S. And for the population standard deviation, this is the Greek lowercase letter for S. So it's also called sigma. If you remember in these formulas down below, we have sigma, the Greek uppercase letter for S, which meant to add, but in this case, we don't need to worry about that. It's just that we'll be referring to the population standard deviation as sigma. Um, so in terms of standard deviation, these are the formulas on the left. Like I said, your calculator is gonna work them out, but if you understand what's happening, every single item is being subtracted from the average. So that's where all the distances come. They get squared so that they aren't negative distances in case a number is above the average or below. And then we add up each and every distance and then divide by how many, or in the case of a sample, how many minus one. But because we had squared those distances to prevent having negative numbers, we need to turn around and take a square root to undo that. Don't sweat any of that because like I said, your calculator will do it. But I do want to talk about over here a variance. What a variance is, if you notice, it's just your information, your standard deviations squared. So whether it was a sample or a population, all you're doing is squaring that standard deviation. Variance comes up a lot in statistical data and research, so I'm mentioning it. It may come up in some future problems, but you'll be prepared for it when you get there. The problem with variance is because you're squaring something, that means your units get squared. So you have square dollars. So like in the case of Bob and Bill and their rent, you know, having a standard deviation of, you know, maybe $50, what ends up happening is their variance would be 5,000 square dollars. 5,000 is a huge number, and what's a square dollar? Or, you know, what's a square hour? So when it comes to variance, we won't be using it that much in class.